Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another Recent Reads on Sunday, a video in which I discuss some of the books that I've read recently. And the first book I want to talk to you about is a leftover from last month, from April, um, and that is Samantha Downing, My Lovely Wife, published in March of this year. Um, I mentioned this book in my To Be Released video for March, so maybe you are familiar with the title. Samantha Downing is an American author living in New Orleans, and according to her website, she has been writing all her adult life. Um, various novels, but this one, My Lovely Wife, is the first one to be published, so it's her debut. And it's a crime thriller novel, just for those of you who might not want to read that, you can just skip forward. Um, anyway, the, um, the a premise of the book is uh, we follow a family, Millicent and her husband, who calls himself Tobias. Uh, they have two teenage children, a daughter and a son, Rory and Jenna, and, you know, your typical suburban family. Um, the story is told from the perspective of the husband in first person, and we learn really early on that there is something not quite right with this family and that there have been some murders committed by the husband and the wife. It's a kind of a Bonnie and Clyde story, but in a family setting. Uh, our narrator is maybe not the most reliable one. We never learn his real name. Uh, he doesn't tell us, but he... Uh, when he's out on a prowl together with his wife, he uses the name Tobias. Um, the story then develops, tells us about the most recent murder, about previous ones, how it all came to pass, um, and how the relationship between Millicent and her no-name husband uh, developed into this, like I said, Bonnie and Clyde kind of scenario. Things get complicated um, when the children, uh, uh, especially the daughter, are uh, getting afraid of the, the serial killer that is obviously um, making the rounds in the neighborhood. And then, you know, the story develops from there. I'm not going to give you any spoilers. Um, if you are into crime or thrillers, this is a solid, good, entertaining book fast-paced, uh, the writing is good enough, uh, it's not, you know, highbrow literary quality, but you don't expect that from a genre book like that. So it's good entertainment, and for that purpose I can certainly recommend it, and I highly enjoyed reading it. The next book I want to talk to you about is also a first novel, and that is Lisa Owens, Not Working, published in 2016. Uh, Lisa Owens is a British writer. Uh, she grew up in Glasgow and Herefordshire, and did an, a, how do you call it, MFA, writing something degree, um, and uh, Obviously, because this is a debut, this is her first novel. Um, the book is, the premise of the book is you have a 30-something couple, Claire and her husband Luke. Uh, Luke is a brain surgeon. Um, the book is set in London. And Claire, uh, when the book opens, had decided to quit her job to find out what she wants to do with her life. And the book then is... Um, recounting her experiences with, like the title says, not working. Uh, the book is told in short chapters, sometimes only one page or half a page, uh, uh, and thematically organized. So, for instance, you would have a, a, a chapter called Jim, and then uh, Claire would tell us what happened when she went to the gym. Um, there is a, a, a straightforward timeline, so in other words, uh, the book progresses over the months that Claire has not been working and what she did and, you know. I I really enjoyed the first, um, it's not a very 
thick book, but I, I would say the first third, the first 50, 75 pages, because this quite humorous, um, Claire, uh, you know, observes uh, people around her, whether it's in the gym or in the, uh, on, on the subway or uh, while she goes shopping. She also has encounters with friends. And that, that first part was really entertaining and with a lot of subtle humor. The writing was good. But unfortunately, then the book didn't develop into anything more than these vignettes. So the story sort of fizzled out. Uh, it became a bit boring to read. Um, and the, the, the story never recovered, so, so to speak. So it's not, yeah, it's not a horrible book, a horribly bad book. But it, it's, yeah, it's a bit boring, except for the beginning I mean, maybe give it a try if that sort of theme of a young 30-something woman not working voluntarily, giving up her job, uh, appeals to you. Have a look. Uh, but uh, I, I would be hesitant uh, to recommend it. And then we move into more serious stuff. <laughs> um, you might know uh, that May is also um, Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. I leave a link to the site of the American Asian Heritage Month government whatever, <laughs> down below, so you can check it out if you uh, are not aware of it. And there are various readathons organized um, around the theme of Asian Pacific Islanders heritage. Um, um, and one, I will leave a link uh, to the announcement video down below, is by reading with Cindy. There are a lot of prompts you can follow. It, it's quite, uh, I, I love her channel, it's very entertaining. Um, but I'm in a way, participating in Asian Readathon, but not uh, following the prompts that Cindy gives, although they are great. So if you want, like I said, check it out. Uh, she has also book recommendations. But for me, it's more that I will try in May uh, to read uh, books by authors, uh, Asian Pacific Islander authors. Um, so... I'm not f f following the prompts, but I'm just trying to expand, you know, my re reading horizons to those kind of authors. And I kicked off the month with a book that is an, an Asian author, but that I've started a long time ago. And that is, yes, I conquered the beast together with Sean. Uh, on the 8th of May, we finished the tale of Genji. Now, this is a... a, 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 a a, really a tome, a mammoth, <laughs> because there's more than 1,100 pages, and it's considered the first novel published in the 11th century. Uh, whoop, this one is uh, translated by Royal Tyler, and the author, although we are not quite sure whether that is her real name, is named here uh, Murasaki Shik Shikibu. Um, the book, uh, I, I read this, I said it already together with Sean, uh, and we started in, in I think, mid-March. It's 40, uh, 54 chapters, and we read a chapter a day. So it took us, whoops, 54 days. Uh, now, the book is exactly what it says, um, at least for until chapter 42. It's the tale of one person, Genji. Uh, Genji uh, uh, is uh, one of the sons of uh, an emperor, so most of the book is set in the imperial palace or around the imperial palace in the 11th century when Genji was born, and we follow him from his childhood into his, into his uh, adulthood and then late 40s. Um, the, the book uh, I already said, uh, 54 chapters, um, and each chapter has a certain theme, but it is uh, more or less a straight time uh, line progressing through the chapter. Sometimes a chapter, you know, they overlap in time. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, I think what... I mean, first of all, what, what was difficult uh, for uh, Sean and I uh, to grab, to grapple with, is that I think Sean mentioned it also in his uh, Friday Reads uh, uh, this week. There are 
I mean, if you if you have read the Russians, like Tolstoy or uh, you know War and Peace or Anna Karenina, a lot of characters. Well, that's nothing. There are hundreds of characters in this book, and they are mostly referred to by their title or position or family relation. And of course, when people uh, you know grow older or uh, the time progresses, their titles and relations changes. So uh, even though the book gives an introduction, each chapter has an introduction with the uh, with the with the characters, and they are referred to with their with their title, and then you know who it is. But it's still uh, difficult to um, yeah to keep that all in mind to remember that all. Um, the the Genji is uh, not a likable character, and uh, John and I presumed that the author did that on purpose to show the patriarchal, very misogynistic um, setting of the imperial palace and the times in Japan in the 11th century. Sometimes it sounds very modern, by the way. So the women are really more or less objects. Uh, they are married off, or they are uh, 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 concubines, or they are uh, seduced, if you want to uh, phrase it euphemistically, but uh, oftentimes it's not voluntary um, that, that uh, they sleep w with men. And the, the, the critique, you would say, from the author is very subtle. So it's not uh, that she openly criticizes uh, the, the, the way uh, uh, women are treated and the way men are acting. Um, what I really liked about it is that it gave um, me, at least, not knowing much about uh, Japanese history in the 11th century, it gave me a good picture of how life must have been like in the imperial palace. The language is very flowery. There's poems, short poems in it. Um, you learn about how people lived there, um, how they interacted, what they did. So I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, but if you are considering, it's heavy. <laughs> if you're considering reading it, I would highly recommend and suggest that you do it with somebody. I think it really worked well for an, an, a massive book like that, um, that. That I read it with somebody, uh, and we we you know we checked in on Voxer every day or every other day about one or two chapters, and that sort of. Um, not, I wouldn't say kept me going, but it kept me um, uh, invested in the book. So the, that is certainly something to do. I couldn't have read it faster. So one chapter a day, I thought was was a good pace. But then it takes uh, almost two months, you know, to read. But anyway, if if you are interested in in um, the you know the first novel um, and the the imperial. Um, Japan in, in the 11th century, yeah, it's a must read, of course. Anyway, I think John also said in his uh, review that there are other translations out there in English, and some of them uh, changed um, uh, the Japanese in the sense that they are not referring to the characters by title or family relations, but that they use names throughout, which even though this is a beautiful book and it has illustrations and everything, but it might uh, be easier to read if you pick a translation where the characters are referred by their names. But anyway, we conquered the beast, um, and I'm really happy that I finally read the book. And the last book uh, for this video is a book that I did read uh, or pick up for Asian uh, Pacific Islander Heritage Month, a, no a, a memoir by an American-Korean author, and that is Nicole Chung, All You Can Ever Know, published last year. 
Um, Nicole Chung, as I said, um, uh, has uh, Korean uh, parents, um, uh, immigrants living in the United States, and in her memoir she recounts um, her life. She uh, was born uh, prematurely uh, and given up for adoption by her parents, and she was adopted by um, uh, an American couple, uh, a white American couple. Uh, she knew uh, from very early on that she was adopted, um, and at a certain point she decides uh, to try to find her birth parents. So the memoir is mainly um, about two themes. First is um, uh, her uh, experiences as the only Asian um, uh, kid in in the family, but also in in school, for instance. And but the bigger chunk of the book is about her search for her birth parents and what happens when she finally um, uh, finds them and the relationships with her uh, um, uh, birth parents and her siblings because she has two sisters. Um, what I really enjoyed about the book uh, was the uh, the quite frank and open way um, I, I I learned about uh, Nicole Chung's um, journey to find her her parents and and how what that was like. So so that was really interesting. Um, but what I missed a little bit was. Um, the 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 part I mentioned before about dealing with the fact that you are not only that you are adopted, but that you are um, the only one, quote unquote, in a family or in a school setting in a in a small town. That was, um, uh, yeah, not that prominent as I had expected that that would be the most prominent. Um, a part, or at least equally prominent. Uh, so it was my, you know, expectation that was not quite fulfilled, which is not the book's fault, but I had different expectations. Uh, but if you are interested in not only an adoption story, but an adoption story where a white couple adopts um, a Korean child, um, th this book uh, is certainly a very good pick. So these were my books for this Sunday's recent reads. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, let me know down in the comments, um, not only as always, of course, uh, you can talk to me about everything, but I'm interested whether you, you are participating in the Asian Readathon, whether you are uh, picking up uh, books in May, uh, uh, written by Asian or Pacific Islander authors. Maybe you can recommend uh, some to me and I'll talk to you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.